we've been talking about where light comes from, but there's actually more than one kind of light. When we, we've said Roy G. Biv, but Mr. Dmitrievich, there's more than just Roy G. Biv. Yeah, Roy G. Biv is all we can see. And there's actually something called the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, EMR for short, for us nerds that like to say yeah, that. EMR. But there's a ton of different ways. In fact, if we were to look, stop right now and see all the waves that are hitting into us, it'd be crazy. Yeah, it'd be crazy. There's trillions of trans waves. Like right now, we're sitting there, radio waves are hitting us. TV, we hope not x-rays, but any type of wave could actually be hitting right. us. And, and in fact, my, my phone, it and your phone too, works on something called microwave. So microwave radiation is hitting this, and when a certain pulse comes in, it says, I have a phone call. So when we talk about the other types of light, right, then we have this, the electromagnetic spectrum. And you can see on one end, we have this funny looking Y thing. That's gamma rays, and then we have x-rays, ultraviolet, visible, oh, let's talk about visible a second, infrared, microwave, and radio waves. Now, you've heard of all these things, microwaves, you've heard of probably x-rays, you've had an x-ray in your life, but notice this narrow band right here in the middle. That is the, the visible light. We can only see just a narrow band. Our eyes can only detect just a little bit of the actual light that's actually in this room, or EMR, as you would like to we say. We call them light, yeah. Yeah, so, and it's crazy. Now, what makes them? What's like the big property? We say electromagnetic radiation. They have this strange, like, weighty thing. What's yeah, so, so all of, in fact, all, it's a form of energy. So energy hits us all the time, but energy travels as a wave. So all of these waves, what they have in common is they're all moving like a wave. So, so let's take a look and talk about the properties of waves. So I think you've got a couple of waves you want to draw. Yeah, so I'm going to just draw visible light because I'm not going to be able to draw accurately an x-ray, but let's say we take red light, which is a longer wavelength, it's going to go something like this. So it's a wave, right? right? Like a water wave at Galveston Island, right? right. But what about a blue wave? A blue like? wave, again, it's going to be similar, except you're going to have a lot more waves in the same time, in the same, same area. So, so, so now we can measure some things about these waves. What could we measure about the waves? Well, the first thing we talk about is wavelength. And okay. so anytime you take any point where it repeats itself, we call that one wavelength. So there's actually a symbol, we call it this the lambda, the Greek lambda symbol, and that means one wavelength. Now if you take a look here. So it could be like a meter long, or it could be a nanometer long. Or in, on, in fact, long we, he, he sold it short. We have radio waves that, that travel, that literally are miles long, and that's why you can sit out there with a, if you're that level of nerd, as we sometimes are, you can actually sit up with a ham radio, and you can get these really long waves that travel from Russia uh, right. and such. They're, they're miles and miles and miles in their wavelength. And so notice the difference here. This is the lambda, the wavelength from the top of one wave to the top of another. We actually call this the crest of the wave, the top. The bottom is the trough of a wave. And you know that probably from, you know, yeah, the crest surfboarding of... at Galveston Island, right? Now, one of the things that's, that's the only difference between red light and, and blue light is that their wavelength is different. But and what's that's... the same? There's something else that's kind of the same. They all travel at the same speed. They travel at the same speed. So they all are moving with a velocity v. And how fast do they move? It's 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, that, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, this number right here, times 10 to the 8 meters so per second. Put that in some like terms that will help me understand. Okay, so let, let's do this. You're, you're, um, you're pretty fast. I see you were exercising. I clearly have lost a step since my college days. So let's say that we were going to have a competition, and you, Mr. Bergman, we we're going to have you run as fast as you could, as far as you could in one second. Okay, sure. Uh, we're going we're gonna to use our imagination here. We're not going to actually have him right, run, but uh, imagine if you would, him running. I have a stopwatch, and I'm going to go, all right, go as fast as you can in one, one second. One second. Boom. Fast. In our imagination. Do I get like a head start? You can I start. Can... I'll tell you what. I'll give you two seconds to run, but how far do you think you could run in two seconds? Like in this classroom, in our classroom right now, picture if you would. Two-thirds of the way across. Two-thirds of the way Maybe across. Maybe... Eight meters. Eight meters. You're just, we're just making up. No, I can't make eight meters. So four meters. So four, eight. I'll tell you what. Let's say you could run half football field in a second. Which, Dude, is, which is crazy That'd fast. be like flash. He'd meters. be winning Olympics right with that. Yeah. If you were running against light and I said, all right, Mr. Bergman, go. And you ran half, half the distance football of the field. field. Man. And, I, and I compared you to light and I said, light, you do the same thing. Light would travel seven times around the earth in that same second. Oh, well, that's fast. So you got smoked, son. Big time. Yeah. And, so that's, and that's. Light travels Crazy, crazy. I had some students in one of my previous classes that were had one with the stopwatch, another with the, the light switch, and they were like, click, click. And they're like, ooh. <laughs> we cannot measure light that quickly yeah. because it's infinitely faster. So when you turn on the light, it feels instantaneous, but the reality is it does take time to travel. Now, this happens actually at the astronomical scale. So if I want to send a radio signal to Mars, 
Mars is actually about eight light minutes away. So if I send a radio signal and radio waves, electromagnetic radiation travels at the same speed, it will take eight minutes to get there. So if I wanted to call you, you got sent to the first trip to Mars, I'd call you and I'd say, hey, Mr. Dmitrovich, eight minutes later, you hear it. And then you respond and say, hey, Mr. Bergman. And then another eight minutes, like 16 minutes. I mean, certainly we might not, we might dispense with the formalities of, hey, mister, when yeah. you have that long of a time. Because, <laughs> yeah, you just have to text message or it, something. It is pretty crazy the yeah. amount of time it would take. Now, I will say this, and this is kind of tricky. It's kind of like rubbing your head and your, what's that, the thumb? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, try. Because all waves travel at the exact same velocity. So that means this, if I were to take a point on this wave and a point on this wave, they would reach the end at the exact same time. Right. Now this has travels more like this, this travels more like this. Now, can you give a way to explain that a little bit better? So think about it this way. If these waves are moving exactly the same speed, the wave front is going to hit me. So I'm standing at the beach, right? And I have long wavelengths, the red ones hitting me. They're gonna hit me like that. But the blue waves, if they're closer together, again, they're still moving at exactly the same speed, but because the wave fronts are hitting me, they're gonna hit me, if you will, faster. The wave fronts are more frequently spread. More frequently spread. And but what do you think's gonna? Which which is gonna hurt me more? Well, clearly this is gonna hurt you. Yeah. More. So the shorter the wavelength, the more energy it is. In fact, you could even you could even look at this. If I were to do two waves just with my hand, so this is wave number one, right? And this is wave number two. You can tell just by that, and by the way, that's not an exaggeration of the comparison between a red light and let's say an x-ray. I couldn't even get the, 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 the up and down motion quickly enough, but clearly when you have a shorter wave, you're gonna have a higher energy. Now our, our pre-AP kids, we're actually gonna do some calculations on this, but as far as you need to know is the longer your wave, the less the energy. Less energy. And if you have short, short ones, like x-rays are really crazy, crazy short. Let me tell you a real story. My grandfather got his medical license in 1920-something. And when he was in his, in that, they, they discovered this cool thing called a fluoroscope. And so let's say I'm, I'm Dr. Casewolf, his name is, and I, Mr. Dimitrovich, you broke your arm. He would come and he would put it on the table and he would put a fluoroscope there and he would set the bones of his patients. See, in the early 20s, they didn't know that x-rays weren't very good for you. And so my grandfather, sad story, he died of cancer, lung cancer, not because he ever smoked a cigarette, because he never did. It's because he got radiation poisoning in his arms because he'd been using these sort of upside down x-ray machines for so many years before they said, oops, not yeah. such a good idea. So and again, it's just this light, but it's so close together, if you will, such a small wavelength that that energy can damage human tissue. Well, even go one step farther. If you take a look at gamma rays, let's take a look yeah, here. Gamma rays even worse. So gamma, if, if any of you guys have had family members who have ever had cancer or whatnot, gamma rays, look at how small they are in the, in the scale here. They're incredibly tiny. And then very, very high energy. Which means they have incredibly high energy, which means that if they're trying to damage something, when it hits into things, it's kind of like a little grenade you're throwing in. So if you have a cancer a radiation treatment, what they're doing is they're bombarding your yeah. cancer area. The problem with that is that it also gamma, hurts the other yeah, side. it's too. indiscriminate. So it'll they try and very pinpoint in a yeah, very yeah. small, but it, it ends up hitting more. But we need to be aware that all of these, like the only difference between gamma ray and X ray and light we see and the TV is watch the length of the wave. is the length of the wave, which has all kinds of other repercussions. And another side note is we look again at our table here, um, ultraviolet. You've heard about how bad ultraviolet radiation for. Um, getting skin sunburns cancer, yeah. and eventually skin cancer, but notice ultraviolet is on the other side of purple light, indigo violet, ultraviolet, makes sense if you think about it. And it means it's, it's shorter and we can't see it. And one last thing I think is super crazy cool is that we can only see from, is it 400 to 700 nanometers? Correct. So our eyeballs are detectors for 400 to 700 nanometers, nanometers a billionth of a meter, but there are animals who can see in the ultraviolet spectrum and some who can see in the infrared spectrum. And the question I would ask is what color do they see? See, we, we can't, it's like blurper. I don't know, so make, make up a name, blurper. <laughs> Did you it's the new color. Blurper? Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> call it what you want. Roy G. Blib Blurper, is that, that's what, it's some color that, that like uh, some insects can see in the um, ultraviolet and some animals can see in the infrared, some like, uh, uh, some, I don't know, like uh, snakes and stuff like that. Uh, so, so, so in closing this up here, we're gonna, dig into this a little bit more yeah. deeply, but it is crazy cool how it is we see things, and a lot of things have to do with waves, and we're gonna draw that correlation between waves and electrons and other things in the future. We're really talking about what's the atom like, but you have to understand light to understand the atom. See you next time.